Hi guys, this is Mrs. Foy and this is going to be a quick screencast about the eye and how the eye works. So um, hopefully at this point um, you will remember the cow eye dissection that we did in lab and the diagram that you are working on as far as the anatomy of the eye goes. So just a couple things I want to go over um, today. So first of all, you may remember that white connective tissue that we saw when we were dissecting the cow eye, and that was the uh, choroid, excuse me, the sclera, the sclera right here. And then one of your first in, uh, in, uh, cuts that you made was over the cornea. So you cut that covering of your eye um, that you did, like where you would put your contact, that was the cornea. The hole that you saw is the pupil. The actual hole that you see here is the pupil. And on the other side of that was the clear round disc. And that clear round disc was the lens. And remember, we took that lens and we put it over some text and we could see that it did uh, basically acted like a little magnifying glass that actually helps to focus light rays. There was some clear jelly stuff that was up in the um, front part of the eye, right in front of the um, lens, and that was called the aqueous humor, and that was kind of a clear jelly stuff. And then when you cut back further into the eye, this back chamber is called the vitreous, vitreous humor. Humor is the, the fluid. Um, the actual hole um, of the pupil, you can see that on either side of that is um, this structure that is called the iris. And the iris goes all the way around. In the cow it was brown, but um, in humans it comes in different colors. We have a rainbow of different colors browns and hazels and blues in humans. And that is actually um, something that controls the amount of light that goes to the pupil. So when, when, when we say our pupils dilate, um, what is happening is that the, the space around the pupil is, um, is changing. And when it constricts, we have less light coming in. So that, that's the job of the iris, actually. And then we also have muscles. Um, that uh, we did not, we did not uh, see specifically in our cow dissection, but there are muscles here that actually pull um, on the lens itself to make the lens change shape. And so that is another thing that helps to focus the light. So as we're going to see, the light comes back through to the very back part of the eye, and the most important tissue back here is called the retina. The retina we saw in our cow eye was very thin and had a lot of blood vessels in it. And the retina is where we have very special cells, specialized neurons called photoreceptors. And these receptors, these uh, sensory receptors respond to light. And there are two different types. There are what we call rods and there are and there are what we call cones, rods and cones. And here you see um, a cartoon of what rods and cones look like, and you can see that they're embedded in the retina. Well, as it turns out, the rods are, we have the most, we have mostly rods, and our rods are very, very sensitive to light, but not color. They are very, very sensitive to light, but not color. And our cones are very sensitive to color. That's how we see color. So as it turns out, we have no rods or cones in this area right here where the, um, the optic nerve takes these uh, impulses, it's got some axons here, some nerves here, that take the impulses back to the brain. And we don't have any rods or cones there specifically, and so we call this the blind spot. Because if we have light that focuses right on that area of the optic nerve, 
there's actually rods and cones are not there to be able to perceive that. And where there is the greatest concentration of these photoreceptors is in a place just right in a little bit above where the optic nerve is. And this is a place where we have the greatest concentration of rods and cones called the fovea centralis. If I can write here centralis, the fovea centralis, and that is the place where most of the rods and the cones are, and that's the place where we have the most accurate um, vision if our light is going to, um, to come into focus right at that spot. So I want to talk just a little bit about how we see. So if we have an image, so here's an image of a candle, the light from this image is going to go through our cornea, right? right in between our iris, through our pupil, and it's going to hit our lens. And our lens focuses the light coming in from this object and actually flips it. The actual um, light that comes in from the top here gets flipped, so it's down here, and the light that's coming in from the bottom gets flipped, and so it's up here. So the image that we actually see projected on the back of the retina, we don't see this, but the image that is projected from the light is actually inverted. And our brain inverts the image back to the way it is once it gets to our, to our actual visual cortex. So you can see that the job of the lens is to focus those light right on the fovea. And that is the place where we are going to have the most concentration of rods and cones. And then those photoreceptors send that information through long axons that uh, make up the optic nerve, and the optic nerve sends the information to the visual cortex of the brain, which is in the occipital lobe, and it actually crosses in the optic chiasma. I don't need to know this, but I'm just going to tell you this. The optic chiasma is a place where the optic nerves cross. It makes an X in the brain, and information from the left eye goes to the right brain, and information from the right eye goes to the left brain, and the image get reinverts, and then those action potentials that are coming, the little stimulus, the electricity that comes from these axons from our photoreceptors, is what our brain interprets as an image. And that's just a very quick little um, introduction about how we see and hopefully that's been helpful and I'll see you in class.